speaking up and active, people active in their communities, that I'm not talking about a fringe minority or a silent majority, but the silenced majority, silenced by the mainstream media. The media today represents a minority elite. These all have to be challenged, and many people are doing it. It's Michael Franti here. This is Amy Goodman with Rochester. Rochester Indian Media. Hi, you're watching Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV. I'm Dawn Zupelli, the Barefoot host, and today uh, our show topic is opposing Walmart. And uh, it's a great campaign happening in the Greece area outside of the city of Rochester here. And to talk about this today is Don Rice, who is the um, co-chairman of Kapow. I like the name. Um, Kapow. How do, you, how do you like that name? Yeah, that's good. Pow. Suck it to him, John. Pow. Well, you know, Kapow is, is a spinoff of, of RA, which stands for Residents Against Walmart in Greece at, at Northgate. And uh, so we, we said we, we got a, uh, some, some bad raps about calling ourselves RA. Who wants to be RA? So... We figured this time we'll pick something that's a little more explosive. So. Okay. And so what does it stand for? It stands for Citizens Alert, Protect Our Waters. Okay. Well, let's just go back to um, how this campaign started. It's been going on a while, so take us back to the, the inception of this. Okay. Well, the inception goes back, uh, oh, about three years. And uh, so we had uh, a few people that uh, were in part of another organization that was not going to oppose Northgate, uh, the Walmart coming to Northgate. And some of the people that were with us were local people living right in the vicinity of Northgate. And so uh, we all got together and said, let's, uh, let's fight this. Uh, and our reasons are, you know, pretty simple. Uh, so Northgate, let's just clarify, Northgate is kind of a semi-abandoned mall in the Greece area? Well, it shouldn't be semi-abandoned because it has an active owner, but oh. uh, it's, it's his strategy not to do anything because he had a... Uh, a uh, proposed lease that was going to happen in a few years, so he just has not done anything to keep them all up, and, and, and it's, it's been in pretty bad shape, so that's true. It is an almost an abandoned mall. And then you found out there was a plan to have, what, like a mega Walmart come in, one of those yeah, super centers? Uh, Walmart's policy these days is only to build super stores, and uh, they have a couple different sizes, but the one they proposed for Northgate was almost 150,000 square feet, <clears throat> as we call them, big box stores. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, as soon as we found that out, we started organizing uh, against it. We had some public meetings, got people signed up, uh, got some people that would, con uh, we sent out letters and asked for contributions. We had a, had a board of about a dozen people and each of them threw in some money and uh, we got our, we, we fought it because there was uh, public hearings that the town had, and we had some some pretty good citizen input uh, against uh, Walmart coming to Northgate. Would you say the majority of citizens in that area are opposed to it, or how does well, it break down? It's 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 pretty equal. You know, some people say yes, I'd like that Walmart there; it would be convenient for me. But but our uh, our stance is that uh, Walmart's uh, quality is not the same as uh, the the small merchants that are currently at at Northgate. And uh, so we we were against it on the basis of the fact that it would bring in a lot a lot of a lot of customers, a lot of crowds, uh, streets problems, uh, the traffic, and uh, public safety concerns and uh, crime concerns that might be brought in and uh, and the usual lighting and noise and sound, uh, p particularly for the people that live. So there. how do you begin a campaign organizing against this multi-billion dollar corporation that can endlessly come up with money with lawyers and uh, mm -hmm. and seems to win all the time? How do you begin a campaign to, well, to fight it? Well, we, we knew where we were uh, fighting, going to be fighting a behemoth, but especially at the time, uh, it was the, the owners and the town of Greece and Walmart were all against us. 
Um, and I guess we got together and, and uh, said, how are we going to go about this? And we started out with uh, some public meetings, and uh, we had uh, some signs that uh, one of the, the unions uh, gave to us, and that's where we got our name of being union supporters, which we, we, we never received any more support from the, from the unions except the, the signs. So it's, it's strictly a, uh, a neighborhood organization, which ended up, we signed up people uh, to be uh, almost 200 people at, at, uh, at, at its peak. And of course, mm -hmm. that, that was three years ago, and things have uh, kind of changed a little bit since then. And it's mostly it goes through the court. I mean, is that how the main fight takes place, is in the courts? Well, that's true. Uh, uh, after uh, the, the town accepted the site plan at Walmart, uh, they, they voted, uh, the planning and zoning committees of the town voted unanimously to, uh, to do this. Uh, then, then, uh, then we got ourselves an attorney who happens to be David Seeger from Buffalo, uh, who's a, a land use attorney and has done some fighting of Walmart's in the Buffalo area. And uh, he's won cases successfully. He, he he's lost some. He's won some. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. and and so he uh, uh, laid out a plan for us, and uh, so we went to to uh, Judge Ark's court in uh, Monroe County. Uh, basically, we were turned down there because he didn't believe that we had a citizen standing, which we did. Uh, but anyhow, that uh, that was his main reason for. What's the citizen standing? Enough support, like the majority. Well, you, you have to have people living uh, right next mm. to the to the area where the plaza is, and, mm -hmm. and we had a couple of those people. And how do you come up with your money for the lawyers and the fees and? Well. We uh, we sent out letters to our all our members, and we got con an amazing amount of contributions mm -hmm. back. Majority of the contributions came from uh, mostly from uh, the um, um, people that were on the steering committee, who were about a dozen people, and they came up with basically thousands of dollars. So you have enough to keep fighting it right now. You're not yes. in debt or anything no. like that. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of details to this case because you've been now you're on the next level you're going to the it's a federal correct we we moved from the raw to the kapow and now we're into the environmental because partly because uh, the town did not declare a a full a seeker investigation that seeker stands for state environmental quality review act and since they didn't uh, did not do that then that that has got looking into some of the situations we found that. Uh, they tend to uh, uh, not review many development projects in Greece uh, as extensively as they ought to be. Mm -hmm. Even though that's the requirement, I mean, it's a legal. It's what's supposed to be done before any zoning or right. But there, but but there's some judgment about uh, involved in interpreting the law, and they interpret it very loosely. Mm -hmm. So, based on the environmental impact, now is the way that you're trying to prevent. That's correct. Walmart from mostly from the uh, the stormwater draining from the parking lot from just developing correct uh, you know the the runoff where, where there are cars there's oil and and uh, all sorts of things that uh, drain into the to the streams and uh, and then into the river and are into the lake mm -hmm. well when we come back we're going to talk more about the specifics of the environmental impact because there's a lot of details to I think Walmart is like the number one um, uh, destruction, like the, the corporation that's like destroying the environment the quickest or something mm -hmm. as uh, they have the reputation for. So we'll talk more about some of the egregious policies and okay. practices of Walmart when we come back and what people can do to get involved with this case. You're watching Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV. Stay tuned. No one ever noticed him. Melissa, the teacher asks, and she says nothing because she is not here. And Melissa has never been here because Melissa is just some abstract jumble of syllables that doesn't fit her position. She's not what she seems. She doesn't want to have to explain to her mother for the 232nd time why she doesn't want to wear a dress to prom. Doesn't paint her face. It's because the whole body's painted on. Melissa, Melissa, James doesn't want to have to explain where he came from. Because with the exception of Melissa, he has been deemed an abstract reality by everyone. All he wishes for is to get to wear a tuxedo to prom. And Melissa has been tugging at breasts steadily growing for three years now, been using duct tape to press them down and mold them more into pecs. She just wishes that people would understand that at birth, her genitals didn't know which way to grow. Mad at God who couldn't relay the message directly to her hormones that they should produce more testosterone. The only person who understands her is James. And they've been playmates since the age of four, around the time girls notice boys. Boys notice girls. See, James's family wanted daughters instead of sons. And Melissa was always like that male beetle that everyone called a ladybug. Melissa, Melissa, where is she? Sometimes. 
We're talking to Don Rice from Kapow, who is uh, involved with the campaign to prevent Walmart from going up in the Greece um, town area where currently the uh, um, Northgate Mall, the Northgate Plaza Mall stands. And we were talking about how you're in the courts right now for the environmental impact that Walmart is going to make in the area. But um, Walmart is um, just, they get away with that everywhere. I mean, right now they'll close one store that's like not a mega or a superstore and they leave these abandoned Walmarts everywhere as they expand maybe down the street and so the environmental impact is so great and it seems like they don't um, maybe they pay kind of like Kodak does or something they just have their <laughs> fines or something and that does, the fines are like less than you know yeah. uh, uh, it's less impact than just to go ahead and you know keep doing that instead of taking care of like um, the environmental destruction or cleanup or something, but I just kind of imagine this landscape of really ugly abandoned Walmart stores like scattering, yeah. which is already happening in some yeah. of these communities, yeah. Yeah. and it sounds like that could even be happening in yeah. Greece if we let well, this go Well, er everything you said is true, and, and that was one of our concerns uh, early on was that uh, Walmart would come in and find out that because there was another store, uh, a superstore that they're trying to get out on Ridge Road, this one is on Dewey Avenue, uh, where we believe uh, it's it's more of a semi-residential area, not a commercial area, and there shouldn't be any big box stores. Uh, so when we uh, w thought about that, we said, yeah, it's a possibility. They may come in here and not make it very well and, and, and close the store in five years, and then what's going to happen then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And... Um, yeah, this, there's just so many aspects of Walmart. I mean, you look at the environmental, that's like maybe the best way to start approaching the battle, but there, it seems like there's so many ways to fight it as far mm -hmm. as like their labor practices, that yeah. alone, like how workers yeah. are treated, yeah. um, you know, poor um, wages, no union. I, I was hearing a story about a woman that was denied bathroom breaks. She was a greeter. I don't know how you can smile as a greeter <laughs> while you have to hold it all day because she was denied and then she had a urinary tract <laughs> infection. And, I mean, these are like mm. prison conditions yeah. or yeah. sweatshop conditions of yeah. these stores. Well, I'm, I'm a longtime Kodak retiree. I love, I love working at Kodak and I'll tell you, I would never, never want to work yet anything, greeter or anything, at, at Walmart. Uh, most of the jobs are minimum wage jobs, and, and I was appalled to find, you know, first we, we looked at what Walmart would do to the community, uh, make it, in our opinion, have a, a less quality place to live. Mm -hmm. uh, but secondly, then we started looking into some of Walmart practices, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the things we found out, like uh, the fact that uh, there's almost 100% turnover in the Walmart labor force in one year's time. That wow. has to say something. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, uh, for years, they've been in the, in the forefront of not paying any additional uh, benefits like health care benefits. And uh, a lot of those people had to go on the public till to get those things taken care of. So the, the taxpayers are, are suffering from, from some of the Walmart practices. Mm -hmm. And they had uh, that, I don't remember where it was, somewhere in Florida, where they were hiring a lot of undocumented immigrant workers, even under the minimum wage. And then, you know, that comes out. And, of course, these people that are undocumented are punished, but Walmart somehow, like, mm -hmm. skates away without without anything. And then what does it do to local business, like the retail shops? And well, you know, we, we know that it's, it's well known that when Walmart comes into the and the outer vicinities of a of a small town, that most of the stores on Main Street, small stores, go out of business, mm -hmm. and uh, and and we see that as the same very same possibility here. That uh, on the other side of Dewey Avenue and up and down uh, from Northgate, there are a lot of small businesses, and some of those businesses are definitely going to be impacted by uh, Walmart coming in. Mm -hmm. Now there's uh, there's people who say no, nah, just the opposite. Uh, the uh, 
uh, Walmart will attract some some good businesses, and, and uh, we we don't believe that. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy too that they um, pay workers so low. When I was reading something about the GDP of Walmart in total is more than 155. Uh, 155 countries combined, their gross domestic product is still less than the profit of Walmart in a yeah, year. It's yeah. just like well, some... Well, you figure if Walmart is the biggest corporation in the world, they are big. Yeah, there are 155 nations worth of yeah. you know, income and they're still treating people mm -hmm. right. like that. And right. I don't think they've, they have any, or maybe there's one like Walmart in the whole like country that has a union or something. Do you, no, do you know? if, if, if it is, it's outside the country. Yeah, yeah, they are definitely non-union. Yeah. So what else? What other dirty Walmart practices should people know about? <laughs> well, and what about people who are just like, well, I want, you know, just cheap products. I can go in there. I can get this range. Those products are all being made in sweatshops in other countries where also yeah. these labor practices are brutal mm -hmm. and people are, you know, right. not living yeah. in. Well, for years uh, until Sam Walton uh, died, it was uh, Walmart was a big advertiser. It was 100% uh, American made. Now, they ought to advertise, which they won't, 100% mm -hmm. not American-made. Mm -hmm. so, and under uh, what conditions? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, and, and what kind of uh, sweatshops they have and so forth. One of the, th the things that, and by the way, you can, you can find out more about Walmart by uh, getting hold of a DVD called The High Cost of Low Prices. Mm. And it's, it's very revealing, but one of the things that they do as far as their contractors or the, the people that they get their uh, supplies from is that they uh, they request that every year they go down in cost, and some some uh, manufacturers just can't uh, can't do that, and so then they say, well, we'll go to another manufacturer. So they they have a big Im impact upon other uh, distributors and and other manufacturers in the country. Yeah. So now the case, let's because we're gonna. Um Figure out how we can get more people involved. Is that helpful? I mean, is that what we need right now? Yeah, to yeah. I think there should be more people aware of, what, of what's happening, and uh, if they can uh, get a hold of us uh, through through our website, uh, that would uh, be uh, if if we can find more people, not only in Greece but especially in Greece. But some of the impact of this uh, goes into the uh, contamination that goes into. Uh, Genesee River and uh, uh, Lake Ontario, the swimming and the fishing and so forth, uh, some of the, the runoffs, and, and this is what we're very, very concerned about, that the town of Greece has, has not done a, a, a real good job of trying to improve those situations. Uh, they, they are more concerned about uh, being sure that the developments uh, get, get done without uh, hold up. Do you think there's a way Walmart would try to come in and like prove that they could keep it clean and and build it in some other way? Well, at this point, I don't think uh, Walmart is, uh, is, is co cooperating with the town of Greece, but that's always possible. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll come back and talk more about uh, how people can get involved and some of the specifics on the upcoming case, like when it's happening and uh, what you need for the support around this to fight it. Okay. So we'll, we'll be back. Okay, kids, here we are at the slavery exhibit. Now, as you can see, the slaves were kidnapped from their homes, chained together for weeks. They would cram them onto these ships in very appalling conditions. Thousands of women and children are being smuggled across the border. Sexual trafficking of children. And as you can see right here, they were treated like animals. They worked all day long for no pay. In sweatshops raided by police, children forced into slave labor. Some of the slave masters were very cruel. They whipped them and they beat them, as you can see in some of these pictures. Torture and assault brutal, even fatal. So, before moving on, are there any questions? Um, does this still happen today? Hey, 
Okay. You left us in the bathroom. You're watching Rochester Indie Media's Indie TV, and today we're talking with Don Rice, who is opposing Walmart in the Greece area and uh, giving Walmart a kapow right in the nose. So <laughs> I hope this is successful. And what is it going to take to win this thing? So what, well, what do you need, Don? How you know, can we help you? We're, we're fighting a, a, a big en entity, Walmart in the background, and, and currently the town of Greece. We, we, we've honed in on the town of Greece because we still don't believe that they did a proper investigation of what the ramifications of having a uh, big box Walmart at the uh, at North, North Cape Plaza would be. And uh, what's motivating them? Tax money like from this? or pr Primarily that's their motivation, yes. But they get a lot of tax benefits yeah. too, right? Well, because this, of this improvement, they get a 50% tax break, uh, property tax break for 10 years. Walmart does. So, so there, yeah. Walmart does. So, so it's a cost uh, to taxpayers in some ways. Pardon me? Is it a cost to taxpayers in some ways, this well, with Walmart? Well, what, what they don't pay, they the rest of us will have to pay, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, subsidize Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's well, just wrong. We're, a lot of us are subsidizing Walmart in, in our both our federal, state, and uh, the local taxes, whether we know it or not. So that's something that a lot of people are not aware how of. Is, how so? Well, because uh, if people don't get their... Uh, their benefits, their medical benefits, and so forth from Walmart, then they then they have to go uh, someplace in the community and uh, mm -hmm. and try to get those, and that, and that will be part which is of probably the majority of workers if the wage is so low and it's not a living wage. That, that's that's true. Yeah. Not even so, unless the, the the worker is married to someone with a good insurance from another company or something, they they have to go find it the best way they can. Mm -hmm. So the court case now, it's. What's okay. happening with it? Well, uh, the background there is that uh, uh, we, our attorney went over uh, lots of documents. We used the Freedom of Information Act and, and got uh, uh, information uh, as far as the Greece Town Board meetings, the, the Zoning Board and the Planning Board meetings, we went over those documents and found that from, from his perspective, uh, there's something called an MS4 uh, requirement uh, from the state for um, for communities, and that uh, our attorney uh, does not believe that uh, the town of Greece is living up to the MS4 regulations. And which uh, states what? Well, it, it just states that uh, you need to um, uh, do a full investigation for uh, a new development, so that uh, that the stormwater runoff, which is our big concern mm -hmm. here, is uh, controlled properly. Uh, uh, held back and uh, run into the proper locations. Mm -hmm. So it's already been three years that you've been kind of resisting them. They wanted to come in right away. Like how long do you expect this to keep going until they yeah. finally make a decision and you've went through every tier of uh, well, court? If, if our suit, which was just put in in January, a pre-suit went in in um, September, uh, our suit to the town uh, was done in January and they have replied with uh, uh, both um, indications that uh, what we're alleging is not true and with some, some data to try to back it up. Uh, and they've also replied at this particular point with the uh, fact that they don't think there's enough uh, uh, facts here to, uh, to go ahead with the case. So they want to dismiss the case. And so we, uh, as of April 6th, which is right up to date, uh, we've had to reply why uh, the suit should not be uh, not not be stopped, and then this this will go on. Presumably, uh, the judge will say yes. There's enough information here that we should continue, and eventually, more documents will go into uh, judge, which is Judge Saragusa in the federal court, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, both in writing and then uh, in uh, later in June we have a a hearing before the federal court before. Uh, for oral arguments. What other organizations or groups are supporting you at this time and how important does that um, impact this well, that's, case? Well, uh, that's very important because uh, this is a way that uh, some of the some of the big uh, environmental organizations like the Sierra Club, this is a way for them to actually uh, do uh, things other than uh, information and advertising and uh, promoting and so forth. And so we have we have contacted several of the environmental organizations and uh, 
gotten mixed mixed results. There have been people there who had said, "Yes, hurrah, go on, do do your thing," mm. and uh, we said, "Well, yeah, but we need some. Uh, we don't need any financial support from you, but we need some uh, moral support." And so we've got some some yeses and some noes, and that's an activity which we continue. So, if, do you mean if like any, letters to the judge, or are we talking about mm. like researchers, or what kind of? Well, I, I think uh, anything anybody that has facts, especially about stormwater runoff in Fleming Creek or any of the ponds around uh, Greece, uh, the specific uh, data, that would be helpful to us. And just coming forward uh, uh, and uh, letting us know that, yes, they're on our side, they want to they wanna help us, uh, back us up, and that would be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's any way this will come out of the courts and into the street to oppose this or like other ways like if this fails then they just kind of plow in and bulldoze mm -hmm. in or are there other ways that well there, that's we a good see question resistance? We, at, at this point we really haven't done much uh, speculating on what what might happen if, if, if this is not successful but uh, I think uh, we're we're gonna we, we believe that we have a, a case here and we're going to continue to the to the end mm -hmm. All right. Well, any last um, thoughts as far as well, what we, people uh, really need I, to know I, about I this? I think you're going to have it uh, put up, but I think we do have a website. Mm -hmm. So any individuals uh, in the town, of residents in the town of Greece, and especially those that live close to Northgate Shopping Center or uh, by some of, the, some of the streams that run through Greece where there's been periodic flooding and so forth, those people, if they contact us and say, yeah, we'd like to be part of it, the more people that, that support us, uh, both uh, residents and individuals and the, uh, the, the groups, the, the better off, that uh, more comfortable will feel that we're representing uh, what people want. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you didn't get exploited. I know sometimes people don't have a choice but to be exploited to work for Walmart, but they use a lot of people in your generation that are retired <laughs> for part-time to be those greeters, and instead you're fighting it, and you have the big frown and the yellow frown. I think maybe we should you know, get that sticker campaign going, how well, happy we for, are. Fortunately, personally, anyhow, I have, I have a reasonably good retirement from Kodak, so I don't have to worry about being a greeter at Walmart. Another huge environmental destroyer locally. <laughs> We're oh, yeah, on yeah, another that, show and things true. that we can do. But, um, <laughs> Thanks, Don. I wish you a lot of luck with this campaign and uh, getting the word out so people can get more information. We'll put all that up for them, and people right. can check out our website, rochester.indymedia.org, to follow this story, and hopefully you'll be back with a success story. And, thank, uh, thank you very much, Don. That would be great. I hope thank it's you. a win. Kapow okay. to Walmart. All right. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Don. <laughs>